Morning, Callum. This is Callum from Ingenious, um, and we're just having a chat with regard to Ingenious business. Callum, can I ask you, how has Ingenious's business changed since the pandemic, especially since uh, with the impact on fleets and employees working from home, as we are all seeming to do? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, we actually think that uh, Ingenious has been pretty well positioned just to carry on as as we were. Uh, obviously, we're a sort of tech enabled service as we would call it. So we are um, a good solution to allow people to continue to uh, uh, to continue their vehicle movement and their fleet operations, regardless of whether they're in the office or at home. Uh, so in that sense, we've been really well uh, positioned to just carry on doing what we were what we were doing. Um, in terms of sort of other changes to the business, I think the, the pandemic has kicked off a few uh, a few other trends in the automotive industry. There's there's been a a huge amount of change in a short space of time over the last couple of years. Um, one of those being the the increasing uh, digital skew in, in retail, or at least the growth of um, both selling and buying cars online. That's been a real boom in the market. And we've we've seen that come through uh, to our business and, and is reflected in our in our customer mix. Uh, and, the, and the only other thing to say really is that actually we've just grown significantly since the, the pandemic. So relating back to that first point in terms of being well positioned, um, we feel like uh, it's, uh, you know, sometimes disruption is a is a good thing um, and uh, it can bring benefit. And certainly as a, as a sort of digitally focused business, um, you know, over the past couple of years, despite the pandemic, actually, we've seen an awful lot of growth. You touched on sort of the areas of growth, but um, are you able to give any more sort of uh detail on the growth areas of ingenious during the pandemic and since the pandemic yeah yeah absolutely so one of the things that's always been quite unique and a real strength of ingenious is the the nature of the customer mix so our top six customers are all from different sectors so uh leasing retail uh online retailing corporate fleets fleet managers breakdown organizations um so so Firstly, we're starting from a broad base of, of customers. Um, and then within that, in terms of recent growth areas, then it really has been the sort of retail side that has been uh, driving a lot of the growth over over recent years. I talked in a moment ago about both buying and selling cars online uh, booming. It's obviously well uh, publicized in terms of buying cars online with the likes of Kazoo, Cinch and Kazam, uh, but actually selling cars online, um, whether that's all via motorway or it's via the dealers setting up their own um, uh, uh, sort of uh, private car buying channels or it's car buying group or it's it's you name it there, there's lots out there uh, that's become a real uh, a real growth area for us it's a really good um, intersection of both the service and the tech that we offer both of those things being really useful to people buying cars online so and in, uh, the ability to do an instant and real-time inspection on the vehicle is, is something that's unique um, uh, and then I guess the final thing to say is it's been a it's been a challenging market so uh, yes we've been growing uh, really strongly, which is great, but um, it's you know it's true to say we're not uh, in entirely insulated from the challenges in the market, um, particularly in terms of two things: driver shortages, but but also chip shortages. So to turn it into a positive. At some point, we expect a lot of growth to come out of the accounts that we've already got, um, purely because you know in, in lots of those there's probably thirty or forty percent uh, dip at the moment in demand, purely just due to due to the shortage of vehicles. So. Uh, so, so yeah, that's a, that's a whistle stop tour of the growth as it stands. Would you say that lockdowns gave Ingenious the chance over the last two years to make changes to your services and maybe innovate more than perhaps you were at that time? Well, so Ingenious is a, a pretty young business. So we only delivered our first vehicle in April 2018. Uh, so we, we're starting from a a uh, much more uh, recent point than than most. Mm -hmm. So for us, maybe it's less about innovating on a on an old or from an old basis, and, and actually more about just having recently started afresh. I think that being the case, actually, it's it's more the case that the market has changed to suit Ingenious more than Ingenious has, has changed to suit the market more. Um, we did look at a, a, a few innovations uh, when COVID first hit. So we, um, for example, launched a, a sort of consumer facing service on our on our website, which, to be honest, was a is a marketing channel just to demonstrate to people what we do. 
uh, consumer bookings really are sort of less than one percent of of our overall uh, revenue. It's it's really a, it's entirely a B two B play for us. Um, so so yeah, that's that's the sort of headline. We I wouldn't say we've really innovated to to suit the market. I think the market's shifted, and, and thankfully that's that suits us ingenious uh, to a to an ever uh, truer degree. I mean, it sound that sounds. It's perfect timing for you guys, as it were, really, in the situation that we're all in. Um, can you give us any hints of future ingenious developments, either to your services or to the portal? Sure. So I think um, that the tech is the thing that people associate with with ingenious. It's the, uh, the the shiny thing that gets the gets the headlines or gets people talking. Um, and so it'd be easy to sit here and talk about sort of bells and whistles and things that we're adding um, to change the customer experience of, of using Ingenious. W one thing that's increasingly clear is that customers aren't using us uh, for the tech. So the tech is a means to an end, with the ends being really great service and uh, vehicle movement is a what we'd call a sort of mission critical service it's it's um someone in a in a a similar company in the us described it as being the drains of the industry so you only you only think about vehicle movement as a fleet operator when uh when it stops working and if it's if it's not if it's not blocked and it's working then uh, you carry on focusing on your core business um and uh, that's quite a quite an interesting way to think about it which is just Look, it's it's it needs to work, but it's not our focus. Uh, it's a service that can't stop working; otherwise, it it compromises our core business. Um, and all of that to say, for for customers and what we're focusing on in terms of future development is just making sure the service is absolutely rock solid, um, and that that's the focus of the business. It's not, as I said, adding shiny new things, um, just to just to sort of uh, add to the the customer roadmap or, or pipeline. Um, in a little bit more detail, I guess, or at a slightly lower level down, that means a lot of focus on internal workflows, internal processes, um, our understanding of suppliers, the growth of the supplier network, how well we engage them, both our self-employed uh, internal uh, driver supply chain, but also our, our transporter and network partners. It's a really in, uh, competitive job market at the moment where, you know, you've, it's, not, it's not enough to, uh, to just give people a means to earn money. Uh, anymore it's got to be sort of flexible it's got to be lucrative or profitable it's got to be a, a fun experience as well working uh working at the moment otherwise workers will go elsewhere so um you know i, I say all this just to emphasize the point that whilst we're thinking about customers customers are at the heart of our, our thoughts actually a lot of the focus is going to be on internal matters uh, and suppliers because ultimately those two things are going to be what drives up customer experience absolutely I mean, uh, that the, the you mentioned customer service a lot. I mean, is that alongside other things? What sort of other things make Ingenious stand out against your opposition? Well, you talked about it as opposition. Um, just to be clear, it's a huge market, and we think we've, uh, despite the growth that we've had recently, we've still got under one percent market share. So there's certainly room for all, uh, and we're not focused on on opposition or, or, or beating other people. Uh, we think there's uh, plenty of room for everybody that's currently in the market. In terms of what makes us stand out, yes, as I said, text the shiny thing. So people think about ingenious and say, "Well, the portal's the portal's great." Um, but no, what I think what we're what really actually differentiates us is we think about the accounts that are really successful with Ingenious and where we add a lot of value to the customers that we work with. Um, what's consistent across those accounts is the fact that they are big, complex, sometimes quickly growing businesses that are operating on a nationwide basis, and they need vehicle movement to be sort of plugged in, if you like. Uh, to enable their core operation and they need a one-stop shop that gives them instant price guaranteed fulfillment and takes the headache away. Uh, we talked about uh, vehicle movement being the drains of the industry uh, and uh, and again to go back to thinking about it that way uh, what we're providing for for those companies is a, is a really critical service across the whole of the UK often for complex businesses if you think about a leasing company it might have New vehicle deliveries, uh, end of life collections, midlife swaps, servicing movements, uh, deliveries onto onward buyers. They might have a whole range of different movements that they need to do. And, and what Ingenious provides them with um, is a nationwide one stop shop to do all of those uh, vehicle movements and have control over them all uh, online at the click of a button. So, so that's it. it it's control and it's, uh, it's the one stop shop uh, that Ingenious provides. 
you guys obviously are um, current holders of our best fleet service mm. product from our um, business car awards yeah. last year. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm pleased to pleased to be speaking to you about this now. Um, how has it changed the business winning that award, and how do you plan on keeping hold of it this year? More importantly. That's a very good question. Um, so first and foremost, um, I think that the main thing that it's given us is, is increased credibility. Uh, the automotive industry in the UK is a very tightly networked industry that operates a lot on familiarity and, and trust. And so it's so important to get names against you, whether that's being, you know, someone joining as a customer, someone uh, awarding you a, an award as you have done here. It's so important um to to get those those marks of credibility and uh we've really seen that actually as our pipelines increasingly or our customer base has moved from being people that we knew before we started uh to to people that actually don't know us at all uh, and are, are getting in touch with us and, and are starting trading with us uh, entirely afresh so yeah the, the the key thing it's given us is, is confidence as a company that we we know we're doing the right thing but most of all credibility um and external sort of um validation that you know ingenious is onto a onto a good thing in terms of what we're going to do uh, to try and hold on to it we've got some we have got some exciting uh things lined up despite what i was saying a moment ago about uh, it being all about service and not about tech we do have some exciting tech stuff lined up and in, it, uh, and in particular, we've got one big release uh, in the pipeline that should be coming soon, um, which in short is sort of enabling customers to put together customizable workflows. Uh, so almost just as it's very um, common now for people to build forms online uh, to send out to people, so surveys and uh, you know short forms to collect data where you can define if you want photos taken, multiple choice, single choice, free text entry, all that sort of stuff. Um, We've got a big release coming out, which essentially flips our our current uh, checklist into into one of those really data rich forms. Doesn't sound very interesting, but the key things for customers is it goes back to that one stop shop thing that I was talking about before, which is regardless of whether you want to move a, uh, a you know new vehicle, uh, deliver a new vehicle, collect an old one, sell it online, take it in for servicing, it allows you to be. Uh, very prescriptive about the workflow that you want the driver to go through in in terms of completing that movement but not only that actually action and collect data against each of those steps as you go through um so that it's big it's complicated there's more to it than that but we're getting there and um once it's released i'm very confident it will uh, it will bag us the second award we look forward to receiving <laughs> your entry and um thank you very much for your time chatting to us uh today and Pleasure. uh yeah, as I say, look forward to receiving your entry. Thank you again. Great. Thanks, Martin.